Chapter one, summary. Our earth and solar system were created 78 trillion years ago. As soon as the earth was ready, 144,000 ancestors came from another star system, the star called Sirius that was worshiped by the ancient Egyptians. They inhabited the earth after preparing it by seeding it with plant and animal life. After about 7,000 years since their arrival, their population increased from 144,000 to 1 billion, 8 million. This number, 1 billion, 8 million, is the most sacred number in creation. It is the total number of original people who inhabited the first earth of our universe countless trillions of years ago. Thus, every earth inhabited thereafter keeps this number as their final and stable population. It was determined to be the ideal number of people that can inhabit a planet the size of earth in complete comfort without imposing on each other or on the natural resources as well as on the animals and plants. That enables complete freedom of movement for all life on the planet and this is essential for peace, prosperity, and spiritual growth, or the gaining of knowledge. The reason why the number is specifically 1 billion, 8 million is described in the mathematics section of Black Root Science. The first earth mentioned above was created by the 1 billion, 8 million original gods from the stars of the previous universe. They had existed in that previous universe towards its end, along with trillions upon countless trillions of other people in a state of mind called divine unity or the oneness of God. It is a state of mind where all the people in the universe unite as one. This one is God in truth, not the spirit God of modern religions. When the trillions upon trillions of people at the end of the previous universe were united as one, they experienced an indescribable expansion of their minds, which were as one mind. It expanded to such an extent that it not only circumscribed their entire universe, but exceeded its boundaries by an immeasurable extent. The one mind, or God, became so large that the previous universe could no longer contain him and her. He and she felt the need for a larger universe in which the experience of life would continue. The trillions upon trillions of people, still united as one, then decided to abandon that universe. They consciously left their perfected bodies and rose in mind far above the universe. They then looked down on it and saw it as a small sphere, the way our earth looks when seen from high above in space. Now, the mind is always attached to the body. There is no such thing as a mind without a body as so-called spiritualists would like us to believe. The mind can extend beyond the outer reaches of space, even expand infinitely, but a magnetic attraction always attaches it to the physical body. The magnetic attraction dissipates at death and the mind and individual personality or soul then ascends. I will discuss ascension at a later time. The unified mind of the people who were as one person was so immense that the stars appeared to be the size of atoms. As this person was contemplating the universal sphere, he and she saw that it was adequate for habitation as a new earth with all the stars being its atoms. He and she made 1 billion, 8 million new bodies corresponding to the size of the new earth using some of its substance, the stars and atoms. Then he and she disconnected the magnetic connection to the old bodies and left them in the old universe. The 1 billion, 8 million gods then descended upon the new earth into the new bodies and became the first inhabitants. The matter of every star and planet in the universe is created in seven forms. In modern words, these are magnetism, electricity, light, ether, gases, liquids, and solids. The fourth substance, ether, is the central supporting substance of the other six. It is the womb of creation called space. It is black in color as one can see by looking out into space at night. This absolute blackness called space not only supports the other substances, but it also gives individual color to all objects because the color black contains all other colors in itself. Hence, when the billion, eight million original gods made themselves new bodies, they covered them in skin whose color is black, getting it directly from the ether. Because the gods create all plants and animals from their own bodies, they need to have all color stored in a single color in their creative germ, which is called the dark dominant germ or gene, the source of what modern people call melanin. Upon arriving on the first earth, the mind of God incarnated instantly in 1 billion, 8 million bodies, as already said. 
half of them, 504 million, were female and the other half were male. Each pair of male and female gods are called soulmates. They always create in soulmate pairs, even when in large groups, because all creation has a male and female or negative and positive principle. Negative is not used in a derogatory sense, but as the complement of positive. The billion eight million original people then proceeded to instantly create perfect plants and animals called the original totems from which all evolutionary life forms evolved. They also proceeded to create new stars and planets around the first earth by condensing part of their expanded mind. After living on that first earth for more than a trillion years, they finalized the plans for the completion of a new, much larger universe. They then gave birth to their descendants and then passed out of life or ascended. Before passing, they established the society of the black nation. They established it by withdrawing from or leaving their divine unity in which they had existed for over a trillion years. They did this in order to be able to bring new life into the world, new persons who had never existed before, such as you and me. At the same time, in order to ensure the con continuity of eternity, the same billion, eight million original gods continue to incarnate in the new people. They reside in the unconscious part of the person's mind and are called the mind of God or the divine gift of ancestral memory or what modern people call the spirit of God. Thus, every black person, even though he or she is born brand new, is simultaneously one of the billion, eight million original gods. Only the personality is new. The spirit is old, even eternal. The billion, eight million original people all withdrew from the divine unity except 24 people, 12 men and 12 women. They became the kings and queens called the 24 elders who are really 12 gods or 12 soulmate couples. The 24 elders are called the custodians of divine unity. The 12 gods chose 12 assistants each and called them the 144 chiefs. The gods divided the population into 12 tribes of 84 million people. They further divided each tribe into six clans and set two chiefs, a man and a woman, as the heads of each clan. The chiefs chose a thousand people each and called them the 144,000 judges. They sent them in soulmate pairs all over the earth to set the foundations for 72,000 cities. Each couple took about 14,000 people with them to establish their city. This was the basic organization of the black nation established by the original gods on the first earth. When the other earths were completed and settlers sent to them, this organization was repeated and remains as the divine form of kingdom and queendom on every inhabited earth throughout the universe. The original gods also established seven great rituals of initiation to be used by the leaders to elevate all new people to divine unity. God's purpose for creating universe after universe is to increase him and herself. Every person who completes the seven great rituals becomes full God, exactly like the original people. At that moment of completion, God rediscovers himself and herself anew, as if he and she had never existed before. That is how God renews him and herself, thus overcoming the stagnancy that would be the case in an eternally all-knowing being who never changes. In addition to the seven great rituals, the original people also establish many other rituals and customs covering every aspect of science and life. They then initiated the leaders of their descendants into this knowledge before passing. Their initiation rituals have been faithfully transmitted from generation to generation since the beginning. On our earth, this form of divine rule existed uninterrupted for 78 trillion years until 6,000 years ago when a certain God decided it was time for all the other gods, you and me, to experience that part of us contained in what is called the non-creative recessive light germ. He caused the birth of new races of people, the non-blacks, who would be the vehicles to manifest all that is in that gene. All things without exception are contained in God. God will experience all that is contained in him and her. He and she knows all, but has not experienced all. He and she uses the creation for this purpose of experiencing all that is known, including what is called evil. 
Hence, 6,000 years ago, a god by the name of Yahweh, called Yakub in other ancient scripts, was born here on our earth. He, together with about 60,000 volunteers, who are called the Elohim, made the non-Blacks in our image. They made them by suppressing the dominant Black gene and slowly unfolding the recessive light gene over a period of seven generations of offspring, or 200 years. This caused the appearance of the first non-Black race born to Black people. After another 200 years of deliberate and careful breeding, they caused the second non-Black race to appear out of the first. Then, 200 years later, the third race appeared, and finally, 66 years after the appearance of the third race, the yellow race, the fourth race, Caucasians, appeared. These 60,000 people, Yahweh and the Elohim, thus initiated the modern stage, the modern age and process that would eventually bring our divine kingdom to a temporary end. That, in brief, is the sacred history leading from the first earth to our earth into the present situation or cycle called evil, which was preordained to last for 6,000 years.